Hello and uh, welcome to today's video. Uh, today we're going to talk about conditional logic inside Caspio data pages and how by applying different rules we can perform different actions in our forms and reports. In today's video I have four examples to show you. Uh, we're going to take a look at a live example of each one of the data pages and then we're going to go inside the data page wizard and I'm going to teach you how you can configure the conditional logic using the rules tab to give you that conditional statement. So let's take a look at a live example of my first form and in this form I have a medical input form and there's a question here that's asking us have you been hospitalized in the past? And you'll notice that when select is selected nothing really happens to my form. Also if I select no again nothing happens to my form. However if I select yes you're going to see this additional field show up and this field is going to be a required field. So there are two rules that are happening here. Rule number one is if this question does not equal yes, so anything other than yes, hide that field. Conversely, if it does equal to yes, show the field but also make this field a required field. Let's go inside our Caspio account and let me teach you how you can configure this type of a setup. I'm going to edit my form and we're going to navigate over to the configuration screen and step number one is to find that description field that you want to hide and what you want to do is add a section right above that field and to add a section all you have to do is click on this insert button and add a section. You're also going to want to add another section underneath that field because this field that you want to hide should only be for that specific section that you wish to hide. Once you have the section created, you're going to go to the Rules tab and you can see I already have both of my rules created. To create a new rule, just click on the little plus icon and then you're going to use these buttons on the right side to create your criteria and also what action do you want to perform based on that criteria. So my first rule that says here is for that question, have you been hospitalized in the past? If it does not equal to yes, I want to hide section 2. And again, section 2 only has the field called explain. So I'm hiding this section if the answer does not equal to yes. And to simply create this criteria, you just have to click on the new button here. I'm going to click on edit and then you're going to configure this the way I have it here. So find the question does not equal to yes for the operator and you want to simply type in yes or whatever value you have inside that drop down for your own form. Click OK and then you're going to create your action. I'm going to click edit and I simply want to just hide section 2 on my form. And then my second rule is if that question does equal to yes, I want to make that field a required field. So I'm going to click edit and show you that instead of hiding it now, we want to select require and we want to select that explain field because if this equals to yes, I want to make that field required. When you're done, click finish. Go back to your form and now you should be able to see if it equals to yes, show the field, make it required, anything else, hide the field and don't make it required. Alright, so now let's take a look at our second example and in my second example I have a restaurant inspection form and this form has a couple of more rules enabled. I wanted to show you a couple of different options just to give you some ideas of what you can enable for your own forms. And the first rule I have here is based on the property inspected drop-down and what I'm trying to do is based on the selection I would like to hide this entire section of checkboxes. So if I select Jack in the Box nothing happens. But if I select Cheesecake Factory you'll see that entire section is now hidden. The second rule that I have here is based on the inspector name so if I type in Bob I can provide my comments. However if I type in Walter now this comment section is disabled and Walter cannot provide his comments. The last rule that I have on this form that I've enabled is based on this question here. So if this question is blank, meaning no radio button is selected, I am hiding by default an entire section. 
Same thing happens if I select never, seldom, usually. But if I select always, now that entire section is going to show up and each one of these fields is going to be required. Let's go to Caspio and let me teach you how you can enable this for your own form. I'm going to edit my restaurant inspection form and let's navigate over to the configuration screen. And let's take a look at my rules. Rule number one states that if property inspected equals the Cheesecake Factory, go ahead and hide the entire section too. So whatever fields I have under that section, and this goes back to our prior example, the one that we looked at for the medical form. So whatever fields you have inside this section, these fields are going to be hidden based on that input. So that's why on my form, when I select Cheesecake Factory, that entire section is now hidden, all of those fields. My second rule goes to the very last question of my form, looking at the form here, which is the very last one. So if no answer is selected, in other words, if this question equals to blank, by default, I want to hide an entire section. So you'll see here in my setup for rule number two, if that question is blank, go ahead and hide section four. And if I look at my elements, section four is all the way down at the bottom and this entire section is hidden based on this second rule that says, if it's blank, hide section four. So let me click edit here to show you. So if that question is blank, hide section four. Same thing happens that if I select never, seldom, or usually. So this is their criteria and this is what happens based on that criteria. So looking at my form, if I select never, seldom, and usually, and by default, that entire section is hidden. However, if I select always, now you're going to be able to see that section open up. Now my third rule piggyback, piggybacks on this uh, answer for always. So looking at my setup, rule number three, if that question does in fact equal to always, I want to make all of those questions required. That's why you can see on my form, because I selected always, each one of these fields is now required. And my very last question here that I have, or the rule, is based on the inspector name. It's a very simple rule, nothing too complicated about this one. If I click edit to show you, it's basically asking that if the inspector name equals to Walter, I want to disable the comment section. Okay, so looking at my form, if the inspector name equals to Bob, as in not Walter, I can provide my comments, but if I put in Walter, this section is now going to be disabled, and I can't add any information to it. Now let's take a look at our third example, and uh, this is one of my favorites. Uh, I really like this example because it actually gives you a bit of a workflow on your application. Let me give you a live example of what I'm talking about. So imagine you have a lengthy form, you have a lot of fields, and you want to allow your users to you know, get to a certain point and be able to click save until they're finally completed, maybe the second day or the third day, however long it takes them to complete the form. So what I'm doing on this form is if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I have a checkbox here. And what it's looking at is if you check this box now, now the form is looking at all the other prior fields or any other additional fields are now required that you have to fill in before you can submit the form and verify that you have completed the entire form. What's really neat about this example is that let's say you have a report created and you want to filter these records based on this checkbox. So now the manager only gets to see these records if this checkbox was checked. In other words, that if it's checked, it's verifying that all of the other answers are completed and now the manager gets to see the completed form as opposed to just partial completion of that form. Let me show you in Caspio how we can configure this. So in Caspio, we have a performance evaluation form. I'm going to click edit. And believe it or not, this only has one rule. So let's get to the configuration screen and then in my rules tab, it's only one rule that looks at all of these verifications. And the rule states, if this checkbox in my table is checked, which is this one here. So if this is checked, look that all the other fields are required. So under actions, you simply just have to require each one of your fields on the form 
and now when this is checked all of these guys will be required in other words you're gonna have to fill them in before you can submit the form so just click edit for each one of your fields or click new if you don't have the action created select required and look for each one of your fields and make sure they're required and now on your form for performance you're going to have that capability okay so let's take a look at our last example uh, let me show you a live example first not only can you enable conditional logic on the submission forms, but you can also do so on the reports. And this is one of the very common examples that you see on a lot of websites nowadays, that if you have a search form, we also have a checkbox or some kind of a link that you can click on that enables or displays the advanced search. So if I wanted to hide some fields to make things a little bit cleaner on my website, to minimize on the amount of content that we have on the web page, we can show and hide additional fields on the search form based on this checkbox. So let me show you then in our Caspio account how we can accomplish this. Here is my search form. We're going to click edit. And just like on the submission form, we're going to navigate over to the configuration screen of our search fields right over here. And my rules, there's only one rule going on here that if the virtual field one is not checked, go ahead and hide the entire section. So what I'm doing here is I simply added a virtual field by clicking on this button and adding a virtual field. Virtual field is not an actual field in your table. It's just something that you can add to your form to give you some more customization options. So by adding that virtual field, I turn that into a checkbox. And then I have my display text, which is called advanced search. And the display text is going to appear right after your checkbox and I want the value when checked to be yes. I also have a section over here as well so all these fields underneath section 2 are going to be hidden based on this value input. So then in my rules tab if virtual field this checkbox is not checked go ahead and hide section 2 and that's why you're seeing on my form if it's not checked it's hiding that entire section. Conversely, if we do check this box, it's going to open up that entire section too, based on that virtual field checkbox. All right, so that concludes our tutorial today on conditional logic and rules. Keep in mind, these are some common use cases. Of course, depending on your needs, you might be able to configure this in a different way for your own workflows. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions, please let us know. And don't forget to subscribe for any of the latest videos, tips and tricks on how to use Caspio. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.